magical treats taste great, but justice and equality taste better. To combat hate, all ad revenue from My HP Kitchen will be donated to trans and LGBTQ charities. Thank you for supporting the kitchen and helping bake the world a better place. Mischief managed. Hello witches, wizards and those who have just escaped from Azkaban, welcome back to my Harry Potter kitchen. The YouTube series, we're baking our way through the Harry Potter books, creating magical recipes for every item of food and drink that we find inside. If you missed last week's recipe where we created some butterbeer brandy snaps filled with a butterbeer flavoured cream, then check out the link down below in the description to catch up. And if you're new to the kitchen and you want to see some more Harry Potter recipes, make sure you hit that subscribe button and click on the notification bell so you get an alert every Magic Monday when there's a brand new recipe. Speaking of which, it's Magic Monday, so let's get to it. Our next recipe is also in Chapter 2 of The Prisoner of Azkaban, Aunt Marge's Big Mistake. While the family are still chatting after dinner, we see it's normally just a fry up for me of an evening with 12 dogs to look after. Well, I guess we'll try not to make a dog's dinner of this one. Fry ups are back. Earlier in the Philosopher's Stone, we turned our fry up into Harry's face, which is pretty hilarious and a good bit of fun. So I decided we should do version two. And because Aunt Marge loves her dog so much, I thought what would happen if we turned our fry up into a dog? Sometimes what goes in my mind, I don't know. It was all a good laugh though. Great fun to make with the kids as well. And even though you shouldn't always play with your food, sometimes we're allowed. To begin our magical dog-inspired fry-up, we're going to start by preparing our mushrooms and tomatoes. For our mushrooms, you want to make sure they're nice and clean to remove any dirt, and then I'm just going to chop the stems off each one. Preparing the tomatoes is also nice and easy. All I'm going to do is cut them in half lengthways. Place some olive oil into your baking tray and then add your mushrooms and tomatoes on top before seasoning with salt and pepper. Those are then going to go into the oven at 180 degrees Celsius or 360 Fahrenheit for about 10 to 15 minutes until they start to go lovely and caramelised. Now, as it mentions sausages and eggs later in the book, I've stayed true to a more traditional fry up, but of course you don't have to and you can let your creativity take you wherever it wants to go. If you don't eat meat, feel free to swap those out with any vegetables that you like and you can even make this vegan friendly too. I'll leave you with the challenge to tell me what ingredients you would use to bring your favourite dog to life. Next up, we're going to prepare our bacon and I've gone for rashers of streaky bacon, but you can use any that you prefer. To make sure we get some nice texture for our dog, I've used a griddle pan as well, but you can also do this in the oven or in a standard frying pan. Heat until it's nice and hot and then add some oil in before placing your bacon rashers on top. I'm then gonna let those fry for about two to three minutes each side until they're nice and crispy. Flip over and then let them cook through again. Once you're happy with your bacon, you can then remove those and place them to one side. We then need to fry our sausages, so I've got a frying pan on a medium heat with some oil in as well, plating the sausages in one at a time, and then frying for about two to three minutes each side before rotating. Once they're lovely and golden on each side, you can remove from the pan. I want these into thin strips for our decoration, so I'm going to transfer them onto my chopping board and then slice in half. To get a nice round egg for the dog's mouth, I've placed some rings into my frying pan and then used some oil to make sure they're nice and greased. Gently crack your egg into each one and then allow to fry for about one to two minutes. This is also a great time to season with salt and pepper. I'm then gonna turn down the heat and place my lid on top so the steam can cook the egg through. After about another minute, you can then remove the lid and I'm gonna use a palette knife to ease the egg from the molds. Our last ingredient to prepare is our bagel, so I'm just going to slice that in half and then pop that into the toaster. Once it's lovely and golden, I'm then going to spread over a nice even layer of butter. So that is all of our fry up ingredients prepared, cooked and ready to turn into our dog. As I mentioned at the start, this is just a good bit of fun. You don't have to take it too seriously, but I did take a fair few attempts to try and get as much of a dog look as possible. So do let me know what you think. And if you can do one better, I'd love to see your pictures. So make sure you send them in on Instagram. 
To assemble Aunt Marge's fry up dog, I'm gonna place the bagel down first. This is gonna be the dog's face. Place the egg on top of that for the mouth and for the dog's waggy tongue, we're gonna to take those tomato halves and pop one underneath the egg. I'm then gonna make the ears out of bacon by cutting those strips in half and then putting two pieces on each side at an angle. The mushroom eyes are nice and easy. You can just place those on top of the bagel and one mushroom on top of the egg as the nose. You could just serve it like this, but if you want to use those sausages for the dog's body, then all you need to do is place some strips coming out the side of the bagel head and then use some extra sausages for the tail and the dog's legs. And with that, Aunt Marge's dog has come alive as our breakfast. I sure hope Art Marge enjoys this recipe as much as I did. It was pretty hilarious to try and play around with all those ingredients and come up with something that looked like a dog. So let me know down below in the comments, how do you think I did? <laughs> That's all for this week's recipe, but if you want to see more from my Harry Potter kitchen, then make sure you hit that subscribe button and click on the notification bell. Then you'll get an alert every Magic Monday when there's a brand new recipe. I'm off to enjoy my breakfast, so I'll see you next week. <laughs>